Hey guys, Lorenzo here, episode 19 of KSP Next, and we rejoin the action with the probe from episode 16 that is now reaching Mars. Oh boy, do I look forward to doing some science. The maneuver nodes have worked out, we have entered the Martian sphere of influence, and the probe appears to be functioning, but I cannot actually give it controls, and a quick check reveals that this is due to a lack of power. The probe has run out of power and the antenna has turned off and therefore we don't have any connection. It is only executing its uh, pre-existing commands which are to maintain rotation relative to Mars. This is because the solar panels that were sufficient around Earth are no longer good enough because of the increased distance. So with nothing left to do we go to the next mission, Endurance Mission 4 where we try and break our space-based record of uh, three days uh, to get some contract money. The launch itself is going without any hitches whatsoever. Uh, we do again shut down the center engine as we near first stage burnout just to take one G off. So uh, Catherine will be taking 16 to 17 Gs rather than 17 to 18. Aren't we kind? Anyway, this burn uh, is progressing pretty much as planned. No strange happenings, nothing um, of the sort. We are also um, we've outfitted the, the orbiter with more solar panels so that the uh, life support systems can uh, last for their requisite duration. Uh, we're angling the booster now down because uh, our trajectory was slightly suboptimal. We're at a 645 kilometer apogee, at least that's what we're headed for. And I want to keep the periapsis close to Earth so that in the event of any mishap we can make it back into a re-entry course on uh, RCS propellant alone, you know, to keep our astronauts alive. Currently let's test out the um, improved solar power generation system, um, give the panels a few seconds to adapt to uh, the current orientation of the Sun and you know, display that they, uh, or prove that they generate power. We are now uh, decreasing our periapsis to safely deorbit the second stage. Uh, we don't want to clutter up orbital space too much. Mostly for shits and giggles, because uh, let's face it, we're not going to slam into any used stages from a different mission. I mean, last episode was pretty close call, uh, because I didn't pay attention in exactly this situation. But now we're going to use our... Um, on orbit maneuvering systems, the RCS uh, thrusters, to get some distance, get some lateral space between us and the spent state. We are now on a re entry trajectory, of course, so we have to light the third stage engine and, um, well, fix that, get a little bit more speed going so we uh, can remain in orbit. Catherine is happy with the snacks on board and she's looking forward to her three day stay. Meanwhile, she's checking over the power generation systems and is happy to confirm that we are generating a surplus energy. So even with the dark, um, the nights, uh, the the dark halves of the orbits, we will be good to go. So that's an objective achieved from her. We've separated enough from the second stage, so it's time to ignite that third stage and re-establish orbit. There we go. Engine burn looks good, and we're back in orbit in just about two seconds. We've got a 140 kilometer periapsis and that's when the engine shuts down. Not because Catherine pressed any buttons but because it broke. We have suffered our first real engine failure in quite a few missions. I suppose the parts do get more reliable over time. We have flown them a lot of times but this one, this rocket engine um, yeah, it's not going to perform any more Delta V for us. That's right at the beginning of the burn as well. So we have a full tank of fuel and no way to use it. Now, fortunately, we are in a very safe position. We are, uh, as I already said, at 650 kilometers by 140 something kilometers. Uh, actually, that is exactly the intended place for the mission to uh, happen. So after checking out the power systems, the food systems, pretty much anything, else that could be wrong. Uh, Catherine decides to screw it, we're not aborting the mission, this is part of the plan, we're fulfilling the record attempt. So uh, in the next three days she's orbiting the Earth quite a few times and after enough times she radios home and says objective achieved. 
yay, we made it. And that makes it time to re-enter the Earth. Of course, the engine doesn't work, so it has to be done with thrusters, but otherwise the re-entry is completely nominal. Catherine splashes down into the ocean at night and returns home a more veteran astronaut. All is well in the world. And the space program moves on with the Bureaucrat 6. We are going to deploy a satellite to geostationary orbit for monies. And rather than showing the launch itself, released from the clamps, I'm going to show the ascent because I'm using a function of MechJab that I hadn't used before. It's the ascent guidance. If you take a look at the nav ball, you will see a target marker, which I'm following with the nose of the rocket. And I gave MechJab the parameters for my desired orbit, and it is now drawing this uh, guidance for me, which uh, supposedly leads to a optimal ascent. It's uh, going pretty well. You can see the plume expanding as we gain some altitude. We're just over 20 kilometers. The aero shell is glowing a little bit because it's uh, well being violenced through the atmosphere, but otherwise things appear to be going uh, rather well. Um, one thing of note is that the first stage burnout, according to MechJab, happens way lower. We're only at 85 kilometers, so we're still well inside the upper atmosphere uh, when our stage burns out. And that means we have to wait a while to ignite the second one, because even if there is a thin atmosphere, it will provide a very slight deceleration, and that's not good for the engines. The fuel will pull in the top of the tanks and not near the engines. And our ullage system, the RCS thrusters, is really weak, so it can't even fight the little bit of drag in the upper atmosphere. So before igniting the second stage, we have to coast till uh, at least being outside of the atmosphere. No problems though. It's got the same visual glitch that the first stage had, but we'll ignore that and pretend it's normal. Uh, we can now almost set to work on um, establishing geostationary orbits. Now this is a little bit trickier than, uh, say, even a probe to Mars, because you need to do uh, multiple burns. You need to uh, first raise your orbit, obviously, to about 35,000 kilometers, and then you need to wait until you're there at the 35,000 kilometers, uh, which takes hours, hours and hours. And not all second stages actually uh, last that long, so you have to take that into consideration. The, the stage will cool down completely, uh, the rockets will be cold, and they need to be started in space, like we're doing here. Of course, these uh, temperature problems and, uh, well, the boil-off of fuel is modeled, but most of the complexities in a cold starting a space engine aren't modeled in the game. But geostationary missions are, uh, are a tricky bunch, that's what I'm trying to say. So, now that we're at this higher altitude of 36,000 kilometers, we're uh, elongating our orbit, circularizing it. And that leads to another problem, that it's pretty hard to launch payloads to geostationary orbit without leaving orbital debris. Because um, you're, you're making a very wide orbit, and uh, there's no easy way to put junk back into the atmosphere so it can burn up. Um, fortunately, space is big and especially at geostationary altitude, there is a whole lot of it. Uh, we're just doing those uh, insertion burns now, we're also doing a plane change. Um, with some more clever launching, this could probably have been avoided, but I didn't do the clever launching, so we're having to burn an additional kilometer per second to get into the correct inclination. And after a few seconds I figure out that I can use the um, SAS system for this, and this is neat. Because look, we're burning rocket fuel and our speed is staying the same, because we're not modifying our speed, we're exactly anti-normal, and we're only um, modifying the inclination. I thought that was pretty neat how well that worked out. Anyway, we're almost fully into geostationary orbit. The third stage still has some fuel left in it, but of course we do end, to, we do end up having to separate from it. And ideally we want to do the last a little bit of delta V with just the satellite. So it is in a distinctly different orbit from the stage. You don't want them crashing together at any point. I just pull up the contract parameters now and work to uh, to achieve those. They stipulate the exact orbital altitude, inclination, eccentricity, and that's it. So it has to be a geostationary orbit like we almost have here. Uh, but it doesn't matter over which point of the planet we put it. That would probably be a little bit too difficult even for... KSP. Although I'm not sure actually if there are contracts that stipulate that, why not? They could. Anyway, we are now preparing to separate the satellite to do that last little teeny tiny burn with the RCS system. 
and just a few, maybe just one meter per second more. And there we have it. The contract has been completed. The funds have been transferred. We can turn around and use them for our next mission. And of course, we'll use this satellite as a communications relay uh, should we use it. We reserve that right as a space launch company. All right, third mission of the day, the Red Ranger 3. Um, another Mars window has opened up. It's the same mission and the same probe as two episodes ago, with the only exception that it has a lot more solar panels. I'm not using the MechJet guidance here. I'm maybe doing it a little bit too shallow because the whole thing is burning up. Look at that arrow shell glowing a dull red even now. That's probably not quite optimal, but the probe otherwise... <clears throat> the probe other than my voice performed wonderfully here and we'll just test out the satellites, uh, the, not the satellites, the solar panels. Look at that. I upgraded it from 2 to 6. That should hopefully provide enough power at the altitude of Mars. Altitude over the Sun that is. Um, distance from is a better term. Mars is about a third as far away, uh, no, a third as far away again as the Earth. So you need more solar panels to uh, to get enough power. The maneuver nodes have been put in, and otherwise this uh, probe is very happily en route. No uh, irregularities in the mission whatsoever. Um, if you want to see more details about the Mars probe, the reasons for going there, and the planning of said mission, I recommend you check out episode 16. That one deals with uh, the rocket architecture we're dealing with now and uh, well, sends the mission to Mars that ran out of power in the beginning of this episode. Speaking of this episode, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out the next one where we'll be uh, advancing into some hydrogen liquid oxygen second stages. That should hopefully uh, enable us to launch a person to the moon. Yes, you heard that right. Check it out. See you next time. Goodbye.